What's up everybody? Travis here with Nookie Hookers and uh, do a little video on sockeye fishing. Uh, sockeye opened up on July 1. Uh, our runs were expected to be super low and there wasn't going to be a season and then those numbers exceeded what they thought so they went ahead and opened it up. Um, we can keep two fish where we're at uh, 395 bridge to 82 bridge and keep two sockeye. 82 bridge to Priest, you can keep two sockeye, so or one Chinook, but the Chinook's going to close on July 7th. You got the email, so no Chinooks after July 7th. So, anyway, so I get to get a lot of questions on how to rig up for sockeye gear. You know what we're using, how we're doing it, and stuff like that. So, um, there's a couple different things. It depends if you're going to hover fish or troll, or maybe back troll or kind of hover. Uh, we'll do that at Bateman Island. Um, and we kind of find that seam, you know, you get that seam of that current water coming out of the Yakima River. And, um, you know, you hover there and, and what we're using is uh, a Danielson Dodger. I'll get one out and I'm going to show you. So we're using a Danielson Dodger, just like that. Um, those are the... Ots, I believe, eight inch. Guess they should have been better prepared. Yeah, Ott, Dodger, Danielson, um, and rumor is they're going out of business, so I don't know. I got a bunch though, so we're using those. Um, so what you want to do is you'll take that Danielson Dodger and you're going to run a leader off your main line. So probably do a like a 24 inch leader off your main line. Um, you're going to run you're going to run a this is what I do. I run a bead. You can see here, this is my main line here. I'm gonna run a bead. I'm gonna run a dual lock snap swivel bead chain. And then you'll run about a 24 to 36 inch leader to your Danielson Dodger. Um, and this is gonna just simply go back and forth in the water. And it's gonna yank this uh, whatever rig you got on. Um, pretty common, especially like up at Brewster, is something just, some pink beads, a .5 pink smiley blade, double hook setup, throw a piece of shrimp on there and drag that around, play with your depths. So again, main line, and uh, I'm running 20 pound on my main, uh, 20 pound mono liters. So bead, dual lock, bead chain, about a 24 to 36 inch leader, Danielson Dodger, and then you can play around with your depths, a, you know, 16, 18, 20 inches on your setup there, your double hook setup with a, with a tip of shrimp or something. Um, so that's that, that's for hover fishing. Um, you can also, I think you can also anchor up, I've never done that, but you can anchor up and if you got the right current and make these work as well, um, I've just never done it. I know like at Brewster, um, you can see in my previous video, we were up at Brewster and I, I, if I remember right, we were fishing like 22 to 28 feet on the line counters um, at like 1.1 miles an hour, making these things work. And you know, like I said, this is gonna get down in the water and it's gonna go back and forth. It's not gonna go round and round like your pro trolls do or your short bus, but it's gonna go just back and forth, just dodging. And it's gonna yank this back and forth. And so that's that. That's for, like I said, that's for trolling around, stuff like that. Play with your line. You know, line counter is a big, big, I, I got to have line counters on my reels so I know how far I'm going. As far as cannonballs go, I'm going to run, um, if I'm running those Dodgers, the Danielsons, I'm going to run a dual lock. I'm going to take a dual lock snap swivel and I'm going to put it directly on. You can run the sliders as well. I just, I use the dual locks. That's what the point of the beat is. And I'll put it directly on, maybe a maybe a four inch dropper, maybe a 
four or five. I think we were running eight ounce cannonballs at um, Brewster last uh, back in '15, and as well as Bateman Island out here on the Columbia River in the Trace City. So eight ounce, I think, is what I was running. And you just play around with your depths. You know, a good graphics will show you where them where them sockeye are running. You'll see them piled up. And then you adjust your depths accordingly and get in the and get in that water column where them sockeye are fishing. So, like I said, line counters are a big deal to me. Um, been a big fan of the Okuma Cold Water Low Pros. That's I've got ten of them now that I'm running on all my rods, uh, walleye rods, salmon rods, everything, except for my bass rods. Um, and then we're running, of course, the Fox River rods. Now these are walleye rods. They're eight foot. Um, medium and they've got I don't know they it's a medium heavy trolling action but it works dang good for these sockeye because it's got this good backbone in case you do get hit by a king and it's got that fast tip so these are working good these are a walleye rod like I said trolling but they work dang good for, for sockeye fishing on the Columbia what we're doing so I mean and, and can set, they're trolling rods so you're trolling the Danielson Dodgers so that works too now another way that we are um are fishing for these is we're anchored up and you know you can do it anywhere you're gonna find you're gonna want to find you know a seam off of a, a point or something like that and you know anywhere from five to 15 foot of water maybe even 20 foot of water i've seen guys fishing outside of columbia point um, and they were in 15 feet of water anchored up they were running the Danielsons. I probably wouldn't do that. I'd probably try a little something different because the, the bite wasn't real good. But um, I'm running like a 24 inch leader, uh, 24 inch dropper, sorry. So a 24 inch dropper. So here's a dropper I've already got tied up. It's, you know, it's pretty long. It's a five ounce cannonball. I'm gonna run that on my main line, just above that bead. And then I'm gonna run about a four foot leader and this is just an example of something that we uh, have tied up and made ourselves. Uh, take a Colorado blade. We've been doing a lot of painting and messing with stuff. Um, you know, I tied this one up. It's just pink beads, number sixes on the back in between the hooks, number eights on the front, and then this Colorado blade on an interchangeable uh, blade uh, switch. Um, and this is something that my buddy Mike painted up. It's just real simple. He painted it up. It's pink with a green dot in the middle. Um, and this has been working great. It's been catching fish for us. Again, tip with shrimp. So that's a four foot leader there. Let's see if I can get this back in here. So four foot leader, again, from bead, duo, bead chain, duo lock on a four foot leader to my spinner. I'm going to run that back, you know, and then like in here, we're running anywhere between six rods, you know, four and six rods we'll run. Uh, with a two pole endorsement, three guys, we're going to run six rods. So we're usually running different, so you're going to run your different cannonballs. Fours, five, sixes, eights maybe, depending on how far you can get them back. Um, like I said, line counters are a big deal to me, especially when you're trolling. Um, and you can run all different colors. I like pink. Um, this one has been working real well for us. Um, here's another one of my Fox River rods with another one that I made. This is a hammered number five Colorado blade uh, with green beads and a wedding ring. And then, of course, I'm running the uh, I'm running these. I love Gamagatsu, so I'm using a two aught Gamagatsu. These are one aught. These are these will still work, but these are one aught Gamagatsu. Um, I like the two aughts. Crimp the barbs, gotta be crimped. Um, here's some three aught Gamagatsus that I had from before. I, all my hooks are Gamagatsus, um, except for my salmon stuff. Uh, I like to run something a little different. But again, there's another one hammered number five Colorado blade, interchangeable. Green beads, sixes and eights, wedding ring, your mooching rig, tip it with shrimp. Put a little sauce on it, call it good. Um, so that's that. Here's another one that we, me and Mike did. He painted this one. You know, same thing, pink, 
yellow dot, chartreuse, pink beads, eights on top, sixes in the middle. About a four foot leader. I mean, that's it. Um, you can also get the Max stuff. Max has got some already pre tied up. This is a Cha Cha Sakai rig, one aught, Trans Silver Tiger with the pink squid there and and these work um, I used them when I was at Brewster I caught fish on them um, I've just become more and more to tying up my own stuff uh, here's a double whammy sockeye rig same thing those pink beads with that pink smile blade and that's like the number five point five uh, smile blade um, pretty rig ready to go just throw it on a throw it on your uh, your Danielson Dodger there um, and then you can get these these two inch octopus skirts um, and these will work on, uh, you know, if you're going to rig up your own stuff, which again, that's what we've been doing. So there's that. Um, I can show you guys how some of my stuff I am rigging up. Um, I think I'll go with these one odd. I mess with these one odds. And I'm using 20 pound, like I said, 20 pound mono. So. Let's do this. Let's rig up one of these. If I can do this the right way. Any 20 pound mono, I don't know. I just I had some strand laying around, so I've been using that until it's all gone. But you know, I'll pull off. You know, I'll pull off five feet of that. <clears throat> Scissors are always handy in a boat. Two pairs. Let's get better clean cuts. That. So these are barbed, and of course, up here we have to be barbless. So I think we so run it through there, you get your tagline, make your big loop. If I remember right, they call this the Moochin rig. And you run your, run your line back through. Sorry about that. So you've got your tagline this way. You make a big loop, you run it through that way, you pinch the two, leave that little tag sticking out there, this little tag on the back. And wind it up seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I always like to wet it a little bit, and then you're gonna pull on this tag line here holding this. You gotta hold it because it wants to come unraveled if you don't. And then quickly let it go. And you have your tagline sticking out. Just give her a good tug. Okay. Take your scissors. And we'll snap that little tag off there. Just like that. Hook number two. Actually, first, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna run a I'm gonna run a blue setup. I'm gonna try that. We'll try a blue setup. So we've got the Oregon tackle. These are six millimeter uh, blue beads. We've got some eight millimeter blue beads. So I think in the middle, what we'll do is we'll go. We'll do three blue, six millimeter beads between them hooks. Okay, so there you go. We got in between our hook number, our, our trailing hook, three blue six millimeter beads. And hook number two, this one's a little different. You're going to run it this way, run it down. No, I probably like the the back of that hook, that octopus hook, just barely touching them beads like that. Make a loop. Make a loop. 
run it through the back again. You're gonna leave a little tag sticking out. Seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Don't have to be really tight because then it's harder to pull through. Wet it up real good. Nice and slow. Pull it through. Holding on to it. There you go. Maybe you find something good side of the boat or whatever and give it a good tug. So there you go. We got that. Now what we'll do is what all what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna run a couple of the bigger beads on the front. and one six millimeter bead in front of those two eights. Like so. So three sixes, two eights, one six. We'll go ahead and we'll throw our max smile blade on 1.1 1 .1 on the front. And you can try different size blades, 0 0.5, 1.1, 1.5. 1 there you go. Blue smile blade, blue beads, red hooks, tip it with shrimp on the front hook. Um, put whatever one kind of sauce you guys want to put on it. Uh, addicted salmon scent, garlic, Jared Gibbons dipping sauce. Mike's glow scent shrimp it don't matter put something on there mess around um, and then I what I do is I just put a, a small dual lock snap swivel on the top of the leader you know, attach that to your main line and then you're gonna walk those back and the current depending on current flow you're gonna have to use different size weights and stuff like that but you find them good current seams you walk your gear back, you know, depending on how many rods you got, you know, you're going to fish your, your deeper rods on the one side, obviously your shallow rods on the other side. Find that good current seam where it's coming out. Try to stay up above the current seam. Them sockeye are going to push in the slack, come out of the current, and keep running up water. Um, unless you're fishing like at Bateman Island, they still get in that slack water where the Yakima comes out. It's a little dirty on the inside sometimes, but you get in there and you can hover. Uh, you get them Danielsons going back and forth and play with your depths, downriggers, whatever, 16, 20, 25 feet. Good electronics are always going to show you where the fish are at on the screen. And then you can play with your depths accordingly, and it should be good fishing. So, um, Any questions, leave it in the comments. Uh, like, subscribe, and share as usual. We're coming up to 1,000 subscribers. I don't know, 8, 850, 9, or almost to 900 or something like that. 1,000 subscribers, I'm going to give away a Fox River Rod. I keep saying that. Um, I believe in them. I mean, they're awesome rods. There's three of my eight that I have so um, again thousand subscribers we're gonna do a giveaway we're gonna give away a Fox River walleye trolling rod um, crankbait trolling rod so comments like I said leave them in the subscription box like subscribe share share with your friends um, and happy fishing guys good luck out there uh, and I hope you guys catch some sockeye